Good afternoon po sa inyo lahat. Thank you, Sir Ram and Chancellor Mel for um, inviting me to speak to you this afternoon on reproductive health and sexually transmitted infections. I'm very happy actually to be here because this is a topic that's not often spoken about because it's very it's a very sensitive matter. And actually I was given free reign on what topic to choose and I chose to speak on this specifically because among the issues in reproductive health, usually when you talk about sexually transmitted infections, it's best discussed because of the sensitivity by a medical professional. And unlike other concerns such as, um, for instance, uh, topics which can be spoken about by public health uh, specialists include other concerns like maternal and child um, mortality or maternal and child health. But when you talk about STIs, it's best discussed, discussed by a medical professional. So, to give an overview, no, yung overview natin sa pag-uusapan natin, I decided to limit it to two to three topics. Yung una, bibigyan ko lang kayo ng overview tungkol sa ano ba talaga yung reproductive health, kasama dito yung sexual health. And then, we will briefly talk about sexually transmitted infections, tapos mag-zero in ako, mag-focus ako on one specific infection, which is relevant at the present time in our country because of the burden of disease that it, it um implies because it is totally preventable and because there are measures to prevent it that are available in the country right now. So, before, before when you used to talk about reproductive health, ang una mong iniisip, ang una pong mapasok sa isip niyo, family planning o kaya mga contraceptive um, measures. Tapos, because of this very narrow, very narrow concerns, the World Health Organization decided to come up with its own definition of reproductive health based na rin dun sa general definition ng health ng WHO, which is a positive definition. Hindi siya, positive siya in the sense na you are working towards a state of well-being. Hindi siya absence of disease. Huh? So, when you define reproductive health in those terms, ang definition niya is you are in a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being at hindi lang yung wala kang reproductive disease or sakit. So that is a more proactive definition. Now, kasama dito, under the umbrella term of reproductive health, kasama dito ang sexual health, which specifically relates to life and personal relations, at hindi lang tungkol sa, again, hindi lang tungkol sa sexually transmitted diseases o mga sakit. Now, itong, itong um, sexual health, it deals with sexuality, sexual relationships, Tapos, the possibility of being able to have a pleasurable and safe sexual experience na wala kang takot ng discrimination, na pinipilit ka na mag-sex, o violence, which is very common, not just in this day and time, in all nations, these are very common issues that have to be addressed. Pero hindi ganito lahat, hindi ganito yung pananaw, uh, even, even before, hindi ganito yung pananaw sa lahat ng mga taon. It was only in around 1994, no, mga roughly 15 years ago, that around 100, almost 180 nations decided to come together in a conference in Cairo, and they decided to commit to protect reproductive health and reproductive rights, specifically at the time for women and girls, later on expanded to include men, Pero ito ay parang ginawang panaliging milestone ito sa field ng reproductive health kasi nag-iba na ang pananaw. Nag-iba ang mga concepts tungkol sa reproductive health. At ang main, ang pinaka-main advancement nito ay si after the Cairo Conference, inisip nila na instead of a maging priority, na maging priority dati, mga population practices at fertility control, basically policies, Dati kasi ang focus was on policies. Nakakalimutan nila yung tao. Diba? When you report on on family planning, you report on contraceptive acceptors. Or when you report, you report in terms of country statistics. Nakakalimutan mo na yung actual human being. So ang, ang isang development dito sa Cairo Conference ay uh, sigurado nila na dapat ang center ng development efforts ay tao. No? Tapos, dapat meron silang say sa kanilang reproductive rights 
meron silang say sa kanilang um, reproductive health instead of being just objects of interventions. Tapos, so ang, 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 ang naging bagong pananaw, isa pa sa mga bagong pananaw, ay dapat i-offer ito hindi lamang sa kababaihan, kundi para sa kalalakihan din. At dapat, dapat isa-isip na kapag ang approach mo ay dapat holistic. No? Ano ibig sabihin nito? Kasi nakakalimutan minsan ng tao, pag kunyari, very narrow yung ginagawa ng program. So kunyari, sinasabi nila ang, ang problema nung, nung, nung uh, kumukonsulta o ang problema ng kababaihan ay family planning lang, yun lang ang i-address. Hindi nila naaalala na related ito sa iba-ibang problems pa ng kababaihan. For instance, you can talk about maternal and child health to people who are coming in for family planning. Um, if you are concerned with, if you want to advocate breastfeeding, that can also serve as a contraceptive measure. Because uh, there is a certain time that women don't conceive while of breastfeeding, things like that. It's more of, uh, you look at the bigger picture, tapos i-relate mo yun ng mga narrow programs to, to other similar programs in reproductive health dahil meron silang synergistic effect sa isa't isa. Tapos, kailangan din tandaan, no, na nabanggit ni Chansey kanina na there are narrow, uh, there is, there, there may be a narrow age for the reproductive, uh, for a narrow reproductive age, pero hindi na nga, hindi na nga mahulugan na ang reproductive health ay limited lang dito. Kasi actually, it spans the whole life of a person. It starts from childhood, no, so it is a reflection of how well healthy you were as a child. It is critical, especially during your teenage years, when you start to be to be reproductive, uh, active reproductive, uh, active in the reproductive career, and then in adulthood when you have uh, the opportunity to um, bear children, and then it goes beyond even in your old age. So all aspects, all parts of the life cycle, ay merong implication. Importante rin na dapat maalala ang men, no? Kasi usually na nagpo-focus masyado sa kababaihan, kaya ang mga kalalakihan ay eh, nakakalimutan na. Dapat ma maalala rin na meron din silang sariling reproductive health concerns and needs at kahit na ito ay medyo to a lesser extent ng women. In particular, kailangan din na matandaan na ang men, the men have roles. No? They have roles and responsibilities, not just for themselves, but also for the reproductive health of women. Paano to? Kasi, Meron silang role as family decision makers, di ba? Usually, ang mga decisions sa family, right? so even in family planning, hindi lang babae ang gumagawa ng decision, hindi lang lalaki. Pinag-uusapan ito dapat ng couple. So, dapat what comes into play are yung mga views nila sa family size, views nila sa pagplano ng family. Dapat meron din silang say. So, meron silang role and responsibility. So, Bakit uh, overview, bakit importante ang reproductive health? Hindi lang on its own. Kasi importante siya sa general health and consequently, dun sa pag-function mo as a human being. Kasi kung hindi ka healthy, paano ka magtatrabaho? Paano ka makakapag-aral ng mabuti? Paano ka makakapag-provide for your family? These are all interrelated concerns. No? So with that overview, you should be you should understand reproductive health. Hindi lang sa narrow definition na kailangan may treat kang sakit, may may treat kang infection, kailangan mong concern sa contraceptives. You, sh you should treat this in terms and in the context of relationships sa family, no? A more holistic approach. So ano ang leading action points after the Cairo conference? First, dapat i-empower ang women paano educate them more. Next, you involve, pag gumagawa ng programs, dapat hindi lang uh, government or policy makers, dapat i-involve nila ang women and the youth sa paggawa ng services and pro plans for programs and services kasi sila naman yung involved. The third is dapat hindi makalimutan yung mga marginalized, yung mga poor, marginalized, mga excluded, at dapat i-include ang men. No? So, Yun na yung basic, yun na yung parang over, yun na yung medyo uh, theoretical part sa ating talk. Ito ngayon mas practical kasi one of one of the aspects of sexual of reproductive health is sexual health. And for this afternoon, what we have decided to focus on are sexually transmitted infections. Bakit 
pag-uusapan natin to kasi nga hindi ito masyado pinag-uusapan. It's a very valid problem pero hindi ito pinag-uusapan kasi very sensitive yung topic. Even among friends, even among mag-asawa, hindi niyo masyadong pinag-uupag-tuda ka ba mga madali mong i-raise sa partner mo na ikaw ba eh may ginawang hindi ba? May ginawa ka bang hindi maganda o meron ba akong dapat alam? Mga ganong bagay mahirap pag-usapan. As an OB-GYN, minsan ang hirap ipag-open up ang pasyente. No? Kasi even to someone na she consults, hindi siya makapag-open up sa kanyang sexual history. No? So, hindi natin pag-uusapan, you know, this is an informal talk. So, hindi natin, we will not go into the, you know, the nitty-gritty of ano bang STI yan, ano bang gamot, ano, hindi ka na lang pag-uusapan natin. Ang dapat nilang malaman are, first, there are many kinds of sexually transmitted infections. Pangalawa, bakit siya tinatawag na kung, kung aware kayo before ang tawag sa kanya STD? Di ba? That is sexually transmitted diseases. Ngayon, ang tawag sa kanya ay STI na. Napansin nyo? STI na. No? Bakit? Kasi, pag sina sa medical parlance, pag sinabi mong disease, ibig sabihin may nakikita kang manifestation. May nararamdaman ka. But you can be infected without showing any signs at all. Diba? This is different from incubation period. Ha? Diba minsan, kunyari, may flu ka, nagka-flu yung anak mo, nahawa ka, may flu virus ka na pala sa sarili mo, hindi mo palang, wala ka lang symptoms kasi nag incubate pa siya. Hindi ganun niya, that's different. There are certain STIs na talagang totally meron ka na active sa'yo pero wala ka pang manifestation. There are no signs at all that you have. And sometimes magpalab ka, hindi lilitaw ka agad, pero you have an infection. So they decided to call it STI to underscore the fact that not all STI, STIs have clinical manifestations. Okay, maraming klase yan, no? meron caused by bacteria. Maaaring familiar kayo doon sa mga sinauna yung very, very first gonorrhea, tulo, syphilis, no? Yun, eh, caused by bacteria. Anong implication nun? May gamot, antibiotics. Bacteria can be cured, uh, bacterial infections can be cured by antibiotics. Kaso, merong STIs na viral. Ang virus walang cure. Ang cure sa, ang, 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 deep, ang management mo sa viral infections is supportive lang. No? The virus should uh, clear itself. So, in cases of HIV, which does not clear itself, it persists. Supportive ang, ang treatment. May STIs na viral. Meron din parasites. No? Yung mga uh, lice, yung mga um, certain certain parasites, di ba? Crab blouse, na nandiyan mo yan? See? Meron yung iba-ibang klase. So, iba-ibang approach, iba-ibang manifestation. Now, siguro, mas, mas, ang mas importante yung malaman na, regardless of these STIs, bakit ito, uh, at regardless sa, sa concern natin na dapat, dapat parehong men and women ang, 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 uh, we should involve them, in our discussion, whether we like that, the sad truth is that women, women bear the, bear the burden of STIs kasi iba ang manifestation ng STI sa kanila. Iba ang impact. Mas dehado ang babae. Why so? So this, this, um, this information is, was released by the Centers for Disease Control no? sa, sa Amerika to. And these are um, ways in which iba ang manifestation sa women. Number one, kasi iba ang anatomy ng kababaihan. So, because of that, for instance, yung vagina, yung vaginal lining ng babae, mas manipi siya. So, mas madali makapasok ang bacteria. In, in contrast to yung ari ng lalaki na balat. No? It's tough. It's tougher. Ang babae yung mucosa. Kaya mas madali makapenetrate yung virus. So, mas susceptible siya. Pangalawa, yung natural environment ng vagina, moist. So, mas conducive yun. No? Mas, mas, mas madaling mag lumaganap ang, ang STI na mga, ang mga nagkukos ng STI na bacteria at viruses. Mas madaling pumasok. Number two, mas madalas, mas, uh, women is, women are more like, are less likely to have the symptoms na nakikita sa kalalakihan. Kasi mas tago ang, ang 
reproductive organs niya, di ba? So we, sa lalaki kasi, yung ari ng lalaki nakalabas. So kunyari may tulo siya, mapapansin niya kaagad. Kasi makikita mo eh. Ang babae hindi, di ba? Papasok eh. So minsan hindi mo, na, hindi mo alam, hindi mo nakikita, hindi mo napapansin. Meron na palang infection na nangyayari, hindi ka pa rin aware. Tapos, pag may nakil ang babae, hindi niya kaagad, maaaring hindi niya kaagad isipin na infection, may infection siya. Bakit? Because she may confuse it for something else. It may be something normal. Kasi normally, ang women, meron normal discharge. So, ang iisipin mabay, ano ba to? Normal ba to? Part of my monthly discharge? Or meron na ba akong problema? Kaya lang, mahihiyan naman siya magkonsulta. Diba? Tapos, minsan, meron namang infections, meron namang vaginal discharge na hindi naman STI. Kunyari, yung sa mga nakapanganak na dito, nang isan sa pregnancy, meron pa sa inyo naka, naka-feel ng pangangate, o kaya yeast infection. Ang yeast infection or fungal infection, hindi naman siya STI. Pero hindi mo alam, baka mag-worry ka, STI ba to? Tapos, ang, ang sa kalamakihan, mas madali nilang mapansin kasi pag may discharge sila, hindi yung normal. No? Sa, sa babae, hindi mo alam, baka part of your normal discharge. Ito, related ito doon sa anatomy, hindi mo ma- kaagad makikita yung kung meron ka man symptoms, hindi mo madaling makita kasi kunyari sa herpes. Herpes is, ang, ang itsura niya para siyang blister, para siyang uh, singaw. Pero pag yung singaw nasa loob ng puer- puerta mo, ari mo, hindi mo siya mapapansin, maaari hindi mo siya makikita. Samantalang sa lalaki, kita mo kaagad. Ang isa pang problema ay, uh, sa babae kasi meron kang ang babae kasi is the one that gives birth. No? So any STI, any sexually transmitted infection has a huge impact on her on her reproductive career. Kasi ang daanan yung mga fallopian tube pag nag-scar yan, pag nag-pregnant yan, nagsasara, um mahihirapan siya magbuntis. So it maaari ring mga may mga complications. Kunyari pwede siya magbuntis sa labas, to big pregnancy, pwede, pwede siya magkaroon ng pelvic infection. Tapos, marami siyang pwedeng maging manifestation. Sa lalaki, hindi ganun ka-prominent ang, ang impact. Kasi hindi naman nanganganak ang lalaki. Tapos, ang pinaka, isa pa sa mga significant things is that women can pass on the STIs to their babies. E dyan, nag-uumpisa yung minensyon ko kanina na reproductive health is a, it involves all uh, aspects, all parts of your life cycle. Kasi, Kapag ang bata na walang kamalay-malay ay na-conceive at nagkaroon ng STI ang mother niya, maaaring magpasa sa kanya. And he or she starts her life na meron ng burden. No? Meron ng burden. Ma-affected ang bata. Maaaring, ayun ay kung naisig lang siya. Pero pag minanas, maaaring mag-stillbirth. Maaaring makunan. Maaaring hindi na magbundis ang babae or paulit-ulit siya makukunan. So talaga makikita mo, mas, uh, the women are at a disadvantage when it comes to STI. Now, this one is going to be uh, discussed later. Ang isa sa mga pinaka-significant ngayon na STI ay yung tinatawag na human papillomavirus. Bakit? Kasi mas makikita nyo mamaya, it is the cause of cervical cancer. No? Unlike other STIs na kapag nag-cure mo siya, ito, there is an increased burden kasi cervical cancer is actually a leading cause of death hindi lang sa Pilipinas, kundi sa whole world. And um, ang, ang lalaki, kahit na merong, merong chance na mag, pag nagka-HPV siya, pwede siya magkaroon ng cancer, hindi ganon ka-often. No? It happens, pero hindi as much of an impact as sa kababaihan. Tapos, one good thing is, no, one the, the the way we are talking about the different ways that uh, STIs impact on women compared to men. Mas madalas magkonsulta ang babae. Oh, why? Kasi why? Kasi iba ni Papa Papsmir sila. Papa Papsmir sila. Or at one point in their life, they may consult an OB or gynae. OB pag good test, gynae kapag uh, any any other health concerns sa nang pregnant. Kasi um, minsan for pap smear, minsan for just clearance, minsan kasi nahihirapan umihi. For one reason or another, merong mas madalas magkonsulta ang babae. So, mas may chance na makadetect. 
unlike ang lalaki na hindi naman basta-basta pupunta sa doktor unless walang nararamdaman, a woman may go to an, a doctor for a wellness check. So, maaari may chance na ma-detect ito at ma-address. One important reason why we chose, we, we, uh, I chose to focus on, ST, on the STI, which is human papilloma virus status, because like I mentioned earlier, there is now a vaccine to prevent HPV. And it is available in the country. Huh? It's available. So, if you prevent that particular STI, it will go a long way, not just towards preventing cancer, but also you can it it, it, will ha, it has a huge impact on our future generations. No, the main target for these interventions are teenage uh, girls who have not yet had started their reproductive career or who, who have not been sexually active. So if you catch them, it is a very um, so it's, it has a huge impact on towards preventing uh, not just STI but also cancer. And now with the with the with the advent of social media and the internet, and now that there are more organizations which are proactive, marami ka nang makuha na ng information tungkol dito at marami mga mga uh, venues tulad nito na maaari pag-usapan yung mga ganitong problema. Okay. So ngayon, ang STI, hindi naman natin pwedeng pag-usapan na specific. So, ang, gag ang ginawa ko eh, para mas madali, I'm going to talk about the most often questions asked. Na gustong tanongin, actually, the, most, the questions na madalas gustong tanongin pero hindi matanong. Okay? So, i-address natin to. Number one, Makakakuha ba ako ng STI from kissing? Ano sa tingin niyo? Kissing. Kasi dati, no, nung, nung, panahon, nung, nung older generations, ang sabi talaga, kaya nga tinatawag na sexually transmitted disease. Kasi dapat na sex. Diba? Sexually transmitted eh. Ano ang premise nito? Kasi ang sabi nila, yung mga, yung mga gonorrhea, syphilis, yung mga mikrobyo, hindi naman nabubuhay yan. Dapat matransmit yan through bodily fluid. Tapos dapat i-transmit, ibigay, ipasa mo kaagad in a warm environment. So, yung mga, kunyari, nasa tatwalya or nasa toilet, di ba? Iniisip mo, eh, kasi by the time patay na yung mikrobyo. Well, that's not the case anymore. No? So, can I get STI from kissing? Yes. Depende sa STI. Example, meron genital herpes yung, yung partner mo. O kaya, may iba kang medyo malikot ka na genital, genital herpes yun. Tapos, may kinalaman din dyan ng mga sexual practices. If you get the genital herpes on your mouth, and then you kiss someone, and the genital her the, the herpes virus is in the fluid, you can pass it on. So it's possible. It doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen for all STIs. But if you're asking us, can you get it? The answer is yes. So dyan pupunta, maisingit ko lang, ang different sexual practices, no? Kasi now, no? Being a talk on uh, on STIs, it's inevitable that this will come up. The different sexual practices. For example, low risk, uh, it, it is actually ranked here, no? From low risk to the left to high risk at the right. Of course, high risk is vaginal intercourse and anal intercourse. Kasi talagang talaga penetrative yan. Pero, pero, Paano ito mga nandito? Kissing, fingering, tapos second is oral sex, male on female, female on male, tapos the third row is, you know, sex toys. Ano yung implication nito? Paano kung kunwari, sasabihin, hindi naman kailangan ng penetrative sex, pero let's say, paano kung hindi naman kami nag-sex pero may petting or heavy petting or heavy necking? Diba? Kung kunyari may teenage kayo, anak, kakapahan na kayo. Kasi hindi naman kami nag-ano eh, kissing-kissing lang or ano-ano lang. There are many sexual practices but uh, they think they, uh, there's no chance of getting an SDI because it's not sexually, it's not a sexual, it's not penetrative sexual intercourse. But there actually is a risk. So, can I get SDI from oral sex? See, yes. As long as you have contact with uh, the genitalia with 
an infected genitalia with the fluids and the microorganisms do also fluids and you you have contact with your mouth that also has fluids, you can get it. Ta? Can I get an STI and not know it? Yes. Like I said, there are sexually transmitted infections that have no manifestations at all. So maaring meron ka pala, hindi mo alam. And it's not just fintas incubation. Talaga meron ka na matigal, hindi mo alam. Can I get an STI from a public toilet? What do you think? Public toilet. Actually, yes. No? Before, sasabihin nila hindi. Pero pag may nalas-malas ka at may fluid doon sa toilet at naupuan mo, number two, ang HPV, no? what what makes it different? Human papillomavirus, you will see later. Ang transmission ng HPV, ang HPV kasi, human papillomavirus, ang, ang cell na affected dyan ay yung skin cell of the topmost layer ng balat. Kasi actually, mamaya, makikita nyo, pag sinabi mong papillomavirus, papillomavirus, it's a general family of viruses na kulugo. So actually, yung mga kulugo, yung mga warts, yung mga skin warts, it's a, it belongs to the same family. Hindi nga lang siya sa SDI, ha? Hindi, hindi ibig sabihin na pag may wart kayo, SDI yun, yan, hindi yan, SDI. Pero it belongs, it's a papillomavirus family, upper layer of skin squamous cells. So pag meron ka ng genital, genital HPV, at may skin cell ka from your are na naka-float-float sa toilet bowl at minalas-malas ka, may na ano, it, you can pass it on. There have been studies that it can be passed through fomites, which means this, uh, skin cells that have been shed in blankets or towels. So now it makes you think, di ba? Kasi, um, when, you, when you think about it, protective ba ang condom? Ano ba ang nag-cover ng condom? Inis lang, di ba? Eh, paano yung pubic area? Eh, paano kung nagra-rub-rub-rub lang kayo? May skin din naman yun. You can get it. So, condoms are not 100% preventive. Not having penetrative intercourse is not totally preventive. So, all these things, you know, there's this changing landscape now of knowledge. Akala mo protected ka. Hindi. Hindi pala. How can I limit my risk of STI or HPV transmission? through sex. You know what the what the bottom line is? Don't have sex. That's the only that's the only 100% preventive way. Ab abstinence. The minute you have sex, you are putting yourself at risk. Ganun lang yun. So pag may nagtanong sa inyo, paano ko hindi magkaka-risk? How are you talking about risk? Ako ka mag-sex. Ay, hindi ka magkakaroon na. The minute you have sex, Kahit pasabihin mo, monogamous partner, uh, there is always a risk na you don't know. How do I get tested for STIs? The best way is to approach a health professional, a doctor. Kasi tulad na sabi ko, iba-ibang STI, iba-iba yan ng way of diagnosing, iba-iba yan ng lab exam. Hindi yan, yung, iba, yung ibang lab exam, dapat doktor ang kukuha. Dapat yung medium, yung, yung, yung paglalagyan ng specimen, dapat special, iba-iba yan. So how do I get tested? The best is to consult a doctor. How will I know if my partner is infected with an STI? Hindi mo malalaman. That's the bottom line. You will never know. In fact, even your partner, whether he or she, he or she might not even know if she or she has an STI, hindi niya alam. The only way is to get tested. So, hindi mo alam. Hindi rin pwede sabihan kasi yung well, patagal na naman siyang walang ano naman siya, faithful naman siya, monogamous naman siya, anong pagkakakilala mo eh dati? Hindi mo naman alam. Masabihin ba sa'yo? So, you're never sure. That's the that's the problem. That's why this topic is so sensitive. Tapos, paano mo ibibring up? Pag-uusapan niyo ba yun? Diba? Magka, baka mamaya magka-problema kayo. Wala naman problema. Baka mamaya mabait naman talaga. Tapos pinipilit mo, kukulitin mo. May ano ka ba dati? Ganyan, ganyan. Diba? Pwede magkakaroon pa yung mga all sorts of problems. Now, now you see why it's such a sensitive topic. Diba? Oh, what is the best type of protection from STI during sexual activity? Oh, sabihin na nga, hindi makapag-abstinence. Hindi nga pwede, no? Well, it's still the condom. It's a barrier method. Kasi that's the... We're not saying it's 100% effective, but it's the best given the circumstances. No, better than nothing. At least, may condom. 
Where do I go to get tested again? Just seek the, uh, go to a health professional, to a doctor. Wag na kayo, wag, wag mag-self-test or self palalap. Kasi syempre, nahihiya ka eh. Sasabihin mo doon sa OB mo or doon sa doctor mo, hindi parang kailangan mo i-disclose yung mga sexual history mo. Eh, nahihiya ka. So, mag-google ka. What is the best test po dyan yan? Tapos, pupunta ka sa lab. Pwede ko magpa-test. Well, hindi ganun. Kasi you might be missing out on a lot. Better to, you know, be come up front and just consult a doctor. Kasi, you know, don't Google it kasi that's not the best way to do it. Okay, so now let's go to HPV. A lot of people may not be aware of what HPV is, but the most prominent, prominent case is way back in 2013. You know Michael Douglas, di ba? Our generation, we know him from from older films, but probably now his latest was Ant-Man. He was the, the dad. Oh, oh, kasi mga bata pa kayo eh. Ako, I know him pa from ng bata ko, the streets of San Francisco, o kaya mga, o kaya fatal attraction, o kaya yung mga Wall Street pa yun. Or something like that. Well, in 2013, he was diagnosed with throat cancer. What was then known as throat cancer? Now, eventually, it became known. Sabi niya that later on, pang cancer pala. Basta may cancer siya sa degree. Tapos, he was being interviewed by a, a British, uh, I think, The Guardian. Ang, ang, ang ano naman was, <laughs> yung pagtanong naman was in the context of of uh, smoking and alcohol. Parang, or, or, do you have any regrets about smoking? Because, you know, you have been in. Ang sagot niya, uh, no, no, I, I don't, I, I, you know, because... I acquired this through oral sex. Uh, HPV is a I, uh, throat cancer is caused by HPV, which can be acquired through oral sex. So in 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 uh, parang bottom line is, said you know, I blurbo oral sex caused my throat cancer. Eh, you can imagine, kasi may wife naman siya si Catherine Zeta Jones. Eh, ano naman ang implication no? Ano di ba? Eh, di syempre kagulo sila, kagulo sila. For a while, I think they even separated, no? They just got back. Um, kasi, he, he said that he acquired his uh, throat cancer through an HPV infection through oral sex. And then, of course, syempre, ayan na. Two years later, he said, Naku, I, you know, that time I made those comments, I, will, I'm really, I really regret doing that because it, you know, the effects on, on my family and on my wife, di ba? Kasi, hindi, hindi naman, the assumption is, of course, even if you think that she may not have been the only partner, she's the wife. Eh? So that's, that's how sensitive this matter is, no? The thing is, totoo naman na talaga ang throat cancer can be caused, is, well, caused by HPV, caused by, ano, Bakit? Kasi lining ng throat, no? Squay, again, the squamous cell. So, yun yung, yun yung, ano, yun yung pwedeng effect. Pero here, no, that's, 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 a, that's, I cited that case because it was one of the most prominent cases. But it's in a mild. But the biggest burden of, serve of, of uh, HPV infection, STI, na HPV, is in women. And it is on cervical cancer. Okay. Now, just to, just to, just to clarify, kasi, Kami sometimes, no, we talk about cervical cancer, cervical cancer, assuming that all of you know where the cervix is. No? Pero, uh, recently, I just found out na, yung iba naman hindi ka magpala alam po, ano yung cervix. So, just to, I know, I know this is, I know all of you are, you know, informed, eh, but just to be sure, we're talking about the same thing. Ano ba ang cervix, di ba? Kunyari, this is the, this is, this is the, uh, lower part of a, you know, woman's external genitalia. So, ito yung kita, right? No? So, ito yung vagina. Diba? Now, the uterus, o bahay bata, ito yun. Yung cervix, yun yung pinakadulo. Kung baga sa lobo, yung cervix yung pito. Get it? It's the entrance. So, this is the, this is the uterus. Ay, this is the uterus. Dito, dito nagsistay yung bata pag, pag, with this, no? Tapos, these are the fallopian tubes, yung sinasabi tubes. Tapos ito, itong puting to, yun yung ovario. Yung ovary, doon ang gagaling yung cell, yung mga egg cells. 
Tapos, ito yung sinasabing tubo. Dumadaan yung egg cell dito, nato-fertilize ng sperm. Yeah, yeah. So, this, ito yung concern natin, itong cervix. Pag tinignan namin yan, pag in-examine kayo ng, ng doktor nyo, at nakahiga kayo, nakapwesto kayo ng parang mga anak, ang itsura ng cervix, parang donut. So, you, you understand how hard it is to diagnose cervical cancer kasi, una-una, nasa loob. Magpapasok pa kami na... Pag tinignan lang namin yung pwede, hindi namin kita cervix. Kailangan magpasok pa kami ng instrumento, speculum, tapos ibubuka pa namin at saka lang namin makikita sa dulong-dulo yung, yung cervix. And the, the length of the instrument is parang tissue, pa toilet paper holder, ganun yung carton, tube, ganun kalayo. Sa dulo na makikita mo yung cervix. So you can actually totally have cervical cancer or any changes na hindi mo alam. Okay. Yan ang purpose ng pap smear. Kaya ako na nasasabihin sa inyo na when you have when you go you have to have a pap smear regularly kasi that's the only way your doctor can actually go in that area and get a specimen and see if you have any problems. Bakit ano ngayon ang implication na ano ang ngayon ang significance ng human papilloma virus? Okay? Now, studies have found out na ang HPV is the necessary cause of cervical cancer. No? Ay, ulitin ko, necessary cause. Necessary means kailangan. Cause means yun yung dahilan. So, bottom line is, it implies that kung wala kang HPV, persistent HPV DNA, hindi ka magde-develop ng cancer. You need, you need the HPV DNA to have the cancer. It's a necessary cause. Now, Causality, when you're when in medical in medical terms, causality is a very hard thing to prove. And you know, mga doctor, they, it's, it's, it should be all evidence-based. So, dapat may maganda kang pruweba na talagang cause yan. Okay, give you an example. You know the association of lung cancer and smoking. Ba? You know the association of hepatitis B and C to liver cancer. You all, may hindi nila masabing cause. Sasabihin na nila, association. They have not proven causality. Hindi mo pwede sabihin na cause, smoking causes lung cancer. Or hepa B causes liver cancer. They, don't, they can't even say that. Hindi ba it's, sa atin, it's parang common knowledge na dapat may risk ka? No. Hindi. But for HPV, is the only, it is the first, cervical cancer is the first cancer that they have actually gone on the record to say that HPV is the cause. Ano implication nun? Pag wala kang HPV, hindi ka magkaka-cervical cancer. Diba? Yun eh. Kasi siya yung cause eh. Wala nang itong other factors eh. That's why prevention is important. Now, HP, the problem pa is HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection. Among all people, half of all people will have HPV at one point in their lives. It's the most common so, ano yung combination na yun? It's the most common, it's hard to detect, it can cause cancer, di ba? Parang sobrang, ano yun? Now, question. If you have, if I have HPV DNA, no? That's how they test now eh. So, so tests, no? DNA tests. That ibig ba sabihin at risk ako for, ako for cancer? Not, not always. Bakit? Kasi, like I told you, H, uh, HPV, papilloma virus, it's a big, it's a huge family of viruses. More than 100 types. More than 100 types of, uh, of, uh, of viruses. Tapos yung iba, hindi naman lahat sexually transmitted. Among those that are sexually transmitted, hindi siya lahat na cause ng cancer. You have benign or non-cancer causing types, and you have malik uh, you have high risk types. Okay? Ba ano important anong importance nito? Kasi yung mga uh, non-cancer causing types. Ang pinaka, pinaka well-known dyan are types 6 and 11. They also cause an STI. It's called uh, genital warts or condyloma, a kuminata. Para siyang kulugo pero sa, sa puerta or sa ay or lape. Is it cancer causing? No. But it is an STI. So you have to treat it. Pero hindi siya magpo-proceed to cancer. However, there are also certain types which are cancer causing, high-risk types. HPV 16 and 18 are the most uh, uh, prevalent, most common. Importante ito kasi yung mga vaccines na available, ina-address yan. Vaccines against these types. Okay? 
Question. Paano yan kung kunyari meron akong high risk type? Meron akong ito. 1618, sabi ni doktora, cancer causing daw. Will I have cervical cancer? Not necessarily. Bakit? Kasi, it is not the presence of the, of the high risk type that causes automatically causes. It has to be persistent. Persistence of the high risk types. Now, ang natural history ng HPV is, kung maganda, maganda ang immune system mo, you can clear the virus without doing anything in 3 to 6 months. Kahit pa nagkaroon ka ng high risk type, Kunyari, I acquired it, high risk type, 16 to 18, 16 and 18. But when you test me after, on the seventh month, wala na. So, so you can clear it. However, there is a certain group of, there's a certain cohort of people na for some reason, they have not yet, no, they have not yet, uh, they're not yet definite about what it is. Is it my genetic makeup? Is it my immune system? Some of them don't clear it. So, nagpe persist Kaya siya tinawag ng persistence. Kaya, one year pa rin, meron pa rin. Two years pa rin, meron pa rin. Now, ang, 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 ang good thing and bad thing about cervical cancer is, uh, it, cervical cancer is not an instant cancer. It takes a long time to develop. Average of 10 years. And before you reach that cancer, that point na it's cancer, we have what you call precancerous na stages. Three pa yun, at least three. Bottom line is, if nagpapapap smear ka, madedetect yon precancerous stages at one point or another. Kunyari, hindi ka nagpapap smear last year. Kasi last year, kunyari, precancerous stage one ka. Na mismo yung pap smear mo. Pag nagpapap smear ka next year, probably, precancerous stage two na yan, pero precancerous pa rin, hindi pa rin siya cancer. There are, so, there are so many points to stop it, to address it. Kaya lang, pag hindi ka nagpa-screening or nagpa-papsmer, hindi yun madedetect. Kasi tago mo eh. Diba? So, that's what makes it sad. Kasi it's a sad thing. Kasi it's totally preventable. You can detect it through screening. The, the thing is, not all women go for a pap smear. We do not have any um, nationwide screening program that's instituted. Most of it do, do uh, practically everyone does it on private patient basis or on your own initiative, di ba? Ina-advise, pero hindi naman lahat ng kababaihan ay nagagawa. So, ang result niyan, cervical cancer is the second most common cancer among Filipino women. And it is also the second highest killer of uh, women. Now, take note of this. Incidence starts rising steeply at age 35. Why 35? Kasi nga, it takes a long time to develop. So let's say you're reproductive, you become reproductive, re reproductively active. You start your, your sexual activity at 20, 20, your 20s. Tama lang, di ba? It takes around 10 years. So mga in your 30s, dyan pa lang siya magsastart. Kung, unless may papapaps, you're gonna detect it. Mga 30s ka mag... Okay. So, what are the statistics for the Philippines? 12 Filipino women die from cervical cancer every day despite, it, despite the fact that it is a preventable disease through screening and prevention. Iba na kanong ko. Pwede mo ma-prevent eh. Okay? Well, again, just to, just to reiterate, 100% of all cervical cancer cases are caused by HPV. It is a necessary cause. And 50% or half of sexually active individuals will catch HPV at one point in their life. Those are the stats. Okay? 6,000 Filipinas who are diagnosed with cervical cancer annually, among them, half will die in five years. That is the burden of cervical cancer in the Philippines. And what are the risk factors? Multiple sexual partners, very early, uh, intercourse at a very young age, smoking, risky sexual behavior. So again, what are the symptoms? The early stages do not have symptoms. It is when you, that's why when you have symptoms, it's already late. Kasi nga, tago siya. For the symptoms to become apparent, dapat malala na siya bago ka, mag, bago ka magkaroon ng symptoms. And how can you protect yourself? 
abstinence, monogamy, regular screening, and this is what we want to talk about now, vaccination. Huh? Now, because of the uh, because of the advances, um, I, I, I'm the, the, I had first hand with the phase three clinical trials of these vaccines. So it started in 2004. The, the, the groundwork for this was earlier on pa, no? Late 90s. But finally, you know, you know naman, di ba? Before a drug goes, a drug or a vaccine goes into development, it takes a really long time. So pagdating sa phase three trials, ibig sabihin, talaga nakapasa na yan sa safety. Nagatang kayo yung training sa ethics, di ba? O yung mga safety, clinical, safety, efficacy trials. By the time you reach phase three, you're testing it on, on ano na, women. This was, both, there are two vaccines available. One is by uh, GSK or GlaxoSmithKline. It's called a bivalent vaccine kasi it, it, it addresses the two high-risk types, 16 and 18. It decided to focus on the cancer-causing types. The other vaccine is by MSD or Merck Sharp Dome. Merck. It's called Gardasil. Unlike, uh, in addition to the 16 and 18 that cervix addresses, it also addresses two non-cancer-causing types, type 6 and 11, which prevents genital warts. Um, why? Bakit bivalent lang yung isa? Kasi uh, GSK decided to focus lang. You know, it's not discounting na, na problema rin ang congenital wards. It's, it's, more, it's more like they decided to focus on the cancer because of the risk. No? And um, to, uh, genital ward kasi pwede mo siya i-treat through other means. They decided to focus on the high risk types. Whereas Merck, uh, decided to address even the so it's called quadrivalent ang sa Merck bivalent ang sa GSK now the thing is it's proven to be effective talaga it's, it's probably the most effective vaccine at the moment across all vaccines uh, it, uh, protection is in the nine you know protection is in the 97 to 99 percent which is very very um, it's unusual. Bakit? Kasi nga, na-prove nila it's the necessary cause eh. Kaya, pag na-address mo, di ba? Nagka, they're just, um, uh, they're, I think Merck now has, uh, has moved on to having a nine-valent vaccine, na non-valent. It's not yet available here, pero it started addressing more, more, ano, more types. But, all studies have, uh, shown that Getting vaccinated with either of these is we can really have a great impact because it will really protect. The thing is the labeling, no? Sure, these clinical trials were made with certain uh, age groups in mind. So, the difference is the uh, surveys. A recommendation niya is mainly for the girls. So Merck has that extra extra provision na pwede rin ibigay sa boys. Pero it's actually just a technicality. It's more of kung ano yung pinasa nila sa FDA for approval. No? But, but, but it actually protects no? against cervical, against HPV infection. And uh, all the other all the other cancers that are related. Now, so the question, the question is, it's available here now, no? It's available here. It's not yet a countrywide policy, but schools have started to advocate it, to recommend it for, and this is one of those vaccines that are really strongly recommended because of its impact. But as we, as with other vaccines, we don't have a country policy, a nation, national policy for this because it's not, it's it uh, it's not it doesn't come cheap. One vaccine you give each vaccine for three doses, depending on the kind of vaccine you give it. Uh, first month and then after one month and one or two months and then by the sixth month. So three doses, yeah. And each each dose costs anywhere from three to five thousand pesos. But if you think about if you think about the protection it will afford you, diba? for you Of course. It's always they always emphasize that you still it would be best to combine vaccination with screening, screening pa rin. No? just just to be just to be sure. Probably the screening could be at longer intervals, but 
importance is you have to, you, and it's best to start with young, with the teenagers, before they start their sexual activity. But it doesn't mean that if you are already in the middle age or matanda ka na, na hindi ka na pwede magpavaccinate, pwede pa rin kasi hindi mo naman alam eh. Is it question? Is it, kailangan ko ba muna magpa-test kung may HPV ako bago magpa-vaccinate? Hindi siya cost-effective. Kasi nga, just because ma-detect yan, tapos it sometimes cause a due concern pa, kasi hindi naman ibig sabihin na kapag may HPV ka, magkaka-cancer ka na eh. So if you, if you test and you're positive for a high-risk type, yung pala, not knowing na siguro pala, looking forward, i-clear mo pala yun, eh di kinabahan ka pa, na-actious ka pa, inaway mo pa yung asawa mo. Marami pa, you don't have to test, but you can have it, no, it will afford a, an additional degree of protection. There have also been studies that there's a second peak of sexual activity. This is interesting. There's a certain peak of sexual activity in the 50s to 60s. Diba? Parang, oh, sina mga tita, mga tito, biglang nag, nag, ano, nag-active ulit. So, so, there is a relevance. No? Pwede mo pa, hindi ibig sabihin na reproductive age group lang. The question now is, oh, sige, di, sabi, bakit, bakit, uh, bakit, binibigay din niya ano sa, sa males. Kasi the same HPV, it causes squamous cancer. And all, corollary to that, lahat ng um, orifices of the body na may squamous, pwede siyang ma-affect. So pwede ka magkaroon ng anal, anal cancer, throat cancer, tongue cancer, di ba? Anything with that same lining. Anything with that same lining. So in men, men who have sex with men, that's a term, na, MSM, men who have sex with men, um, they have found na HPV is seen in the anogenital cancers, in the uh, penile cancers, di ba? May kita rin. So, if you think about that, vaccination also has a relevance sa lalaki, di ba? Pwede mo rin, eh, hindi naman, di ba? Eh, ina, pinaprevent mo yung cancer eh, kasi hoda ko sa ang lugar. The men should also be protected. So, Right now, there is no national policy. Most of the countries do not. Why? One reason is they say that before we move on to the men, let's just let's first address the problem with the women. Because cervical cancer is a big burden. It's the more pressing burden. Hindi natin sinasabi na, na hindi natin parang ina-etcha pwede yung mga lalaki. It's just what you do with your limited resources. Let's focus first on the, on the females. Parang ganon. So what happens is, if you're uh, if you're if you're in private in private you know, your private patient if you want to have your sons vaccinated why not you can it's your choice you have the option but it's a private thing diba? now some countries though uh, like in the UK they are uh, I, I I mentioned this in in the context of gender neutrality because um ma sinasabi na the, the, the burden of STIs are, are on women. So, ang nangyayaring tendency is all the interventions are skewed towards women. Paano ngayon yung kalalakihan? Yun ang point na sa UK, no? Ang, ang ano nila is, it's time to vaccinate the boys. And, mind you, kasi sa, sa ibang countries naman, meron silang ano, eh, health service, eh. No? Sagot ng gobyerno. Yes, iba yun. Pero ano, let's look at their, ano, let's look at their logic. They said, may ano naman, kung may resources ka. This is a, an advocacy of HPV action. HPVA, it's a collaborative partnership of more than 58 patient and professional organizations that are working to reduce the burden of HPV in general. So, ang, ad, ang, ad, uh, ang advocacy nila is, i-vaccinate pati ang boys na ang... By the age of 12 and 13, dapat all children, boys and girls, will be vaccinated. Bakit? Kasi sabi nila, yeah, this is the, this is the, these are the facts. In men, there are also HPV-related cancers, like cancer of the base of the tongue, cancer of the tonsil, the oropharynx, the larynx, oral cancers. Again, probably most likely as a result of those sexual practices. Then. Despite the HPVs, uh, despite the impact on the health of both sexes, most of the countries in the world have HPV vaccination programs. So directed sa kababaihan for the reasons I mentioned earlier. 
Pero, ang HPV kasi, nakaka-affect sa, hindi lang sa cervix, sa anus, mouth and throat. Tapos, pwede mo rin siya ipasa sa genital contact. No? Eh, ano ba naman yung, ano ba naman yung, um, parang, parang, ano ba naman yung source ng diba sexual intercourse? So, involved din ang lalaki. So, one, one point of contention is, men can still get HPV if they have sexual contact with women who have not been vaccinated. So, pag in-address mo yung vaccination ng women, tapos hindi mo sila i-address, they, they will put them at risk kasi hindi mo sila pinaccinate kasi lalaki sila. Then, another is that in some, ito, it's too small, but I can, I, I can give you the, the gist, is that kapag girls na yung vinaccinate mo, it perpetuates the belief that females are the ones who are who bear the primary responsibility for health or sexual health. Parang sinasabi mo, para hindi tayo magkaroon ng cervical cancer, pakunahan ng babae. Lalaki, damay lang. Diba? Ito, um, you should, it underscores the fact that reproductive health should be a shared responsibility by both sexes. And then, Ito. Men who have sex with men or MSM, they are at high risk of HPV-related diseases. And if you have no policy like that, they will always be at risk. Kasi girls lang ang vaccinate And here, ito. Kasi, hindi, since wala ng uh, national policy, there is a growing, there is a growing trend for the affluent or the ones who have means and the informed parents to have their boys, their sons vaccinated. So, ang nangyayari na exacerbate yung existing inequalities between the haves and the have-nots. Diba? Kasi kung wala ako, hindi ko maprotektahan yung son ko. Kasi wala akong means, tapos kahit informed ako, wala akong means kasi magpagas medyo pricing yung vaccine. That's why many countries actually now recommend the vaccination of boys, no? Australia, Canada, the US, there are some states that already advocate for this. It will be a long time no, for the Philippines. Kasi nga tayo nga yung females hindi natin ma-vaccinate ma, lahat. So, these are the final slides. Ano, ano ang dapat natin tandaan? No? Na with all the policies, with all the policies for reproductive health, gender, gender norms, gender issues are very, very important. And this is very relevant, especially with uh, the times now. Bakit? Kasi yung mga existing gender norms, nag-aano siya, naka-affect siya ng expectations of both how, what men and women can do or should do. For instance, ang mga lalaki, pag, pag ang norm, eh, you see them as strong parang mag-hesitate sila mag-seek ng, kunyari, meron silang gusto i-consulta o may nararamdaman. They will hesitate to seek for, uh, they, they will hesitate to seek health services kasi they will perceive that as a show of weakness. Di ba? Ano naman yun eh? Parang, oh, consulta ka naman. Eh, huwag na, okay lang yan. Kaya lang yan ng ano-ano kasi ayaw nila magpakonsulta. Then, ang women naman, when gender norms which characterize women as submissive, they will, that will undermine their ability to negotiate with God for condom use kapag sexual intercourse. As parang gusto mong sabihin, ayaw kong mag, ayaw kong mag, uh, ayaw kong mag do kapag hindi ka nakakondom, hindi mo masabi. Kasi parang in the, in the partnership, submissive ka. Pag sinabi ng bossing mo na, ayaw ko ng condom, hindi, hindi ko ma, hindi ko ma feel yung sensation, ganyan, hindi pa yun, ganyan lang, kahit hindi ka protected, di ba? Tapos, other other more serious consequences come into play. Ngayon, depression. Kasi nga, parang feeling mo. This is common if like you're, you have a very, you know, very, very woman ka, tapos malikot ang partner mo, tapos alam mo, every time, every time you have sexual intercourse with him, maaaring you are, you are putting yourself at risk, tapos alam mo namang ma-affect ka, pero wala kang masabi. O kaya, alam mo na yung, yung mga sakit mo nang gagaling doon, so, you become depressed. Or sometimes gender-based violence. Kunyari, pinipilit mong mag-contraception, uh, ayaw naman, di ba? Also, unintended, unintended pregnancy and increases. 
So the bottom line is we have to learn how to engage men as partners in a productive way. So for my last slide, I think this underscores that across all issues, gender issues should always be a consideration in reproductive health programs because no matter how much you, no matter how efficient you are in instituting the policy, if you do not address gender inequality, this will impact on your programs and consequently your desired outcomes. So with that, I'd like to end this talk. I hope that you have learned something for, from it. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to end it. Thank you.